everyone. Welcome to a new episode of the Roald Dahl Retrospective, where we take a look at all the adaptations based off of Roald Dahl's shorts and books. I am Patricia. And uh, my name is Aaron, and uh, we're going to be looking at some uh, uh, pretty old films, but uh, I mean, it's kind of hard for us to kind of make fun of them, given the, uh, of the uh, image quality, given the fact that you can only hear us. So. Yes, indeed. So today we are going to be looking at the second adaptation based off of a Roald Dahl book that uh, came out in 1989. Last time we discussed about Danny the Champion of the World, a TV movie exclusively shown on Thames Television in the UK. So today we're going to go the other way around in which we're going to be talking about a TV movie exclusively in America and nowhere else. We're going to be talking about a TNT war thriller called Breaking Point, which is actually a remake of 36 Hours based off of a Roald Dahl short called Beware of the dog okay and i'm sure there's going to be some british fans out there going to say well tnt was also showed in the uk and he's like yeah who watched it outside of watching wcw monday nitro on friday evenings yeah Uh, so i guess right before we discuss about this movie i guess we'll just briefly mention that aaron and i went to atlanta and atlanta is where cnn and ted turner is from and we actually went over to ted turner street and we saw things like cnn and all that stuff and we just made a whole bunch of ted turner jokes while we were there yeah it's like uh, by your powers combined i am now a street (laughs) yes yes indeed so Yeah, uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's discuss about this movie and see which one is better, the original or the remake. Yeah, here we go. Point stars Corbin Bernstein as U.S. Major Jefferson Pike, and it starts off pretty similar to the original, in which Jefferson Pike is given information by the U.S. Army that there's going to be an attack on Normandy so that they can be able to offset the Germans, except that it goes a little bit in reverse. In the original, the Americans were going through the meeting two days before the attack on Normandy, which is on Uh, June of 1944. However, in the remake, uh, Breaking Point, it's the Nazis who are watching a mm, propaganda film describing the information about that Jefferson Pike was talking alongside with uh, General Eisenhower and getting information about Normandy. And that's when they come up with the idea of capturing uh, Pike so that they can be able to interrogate him. Yeah, I just think in regards to which entrance came in the best, I mean, like, uh, I think the, I'll give credit to the newer one, because at least Breaking Point gave us, like, uh, some, uh, you know, a bit more explanation of what was kind of, like, going on, uh, as of, uh, I mean, you could say it's a dated thing, but uh, I don't particularly like the whole, like, uh, the, uh, and this is something that you'll find through uh, the uh, original uh, movie of uh, 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 that, uh, it basically kind of, like, it has to explain to the audience everything that's kind of, like, going on. In a way, it's kind of like I don't think they kind of like switched out of the idea that, you know, this is a new movie, uh, you know, um, you know, genre or not, not a genre, kind of like a new format, you know, like uh, it doesn't have to be like a theater production where like, you know, you have to explain things off screen, you know, like not off screen. I mean, like everything that's kind of going off screen, if you are like, you know, you've got this like, ability to kind of like show um, images of like what what's going on you know, outside of the narrative, you know, and uh, I think uh, obviously you can't really blame uh, the original for not for basically not doing that. So, but, you know, as breaking point, in my opinion, kind of like catches up 
a bit further than the old movie does in regards to like the way that it kind of like tells the um, the beginning narrative and gives like the, you know a bit of a prologue to about the events that are about to take place. So Breaking Point came out 24 years after 36 hours. So when Pike gets drugged and when he's taken over to being tor- uh, when he's taken over to be tortured to give the information about, you know, where are the Americans going to strike next? And then finally, when he wakes up in the hospital, he um, we don't we as an audience don't get to see the transformation of, you know, him getting the hair dye or him getting his eyes augmented or anything like that. Well, it just goes straight over from being tormented to him being in the hospital and finding out what is going on. Yeah. So it goes straight think, into that immediately. I think the thing with that is obviously and also this is a bit this is going to be a situation where I think some comparisons are going to be far more unfair than others because keep this in mind like uh, the original 36 hours was a, uh, a theatrical production. This this came out in theaters, you know, it made like millions of dollars uh coming out and uh, but you know compare that to um the tnt uh turner broadcasting uh you know budget that they probably had they probably had a very small amount of money probably to play with probably very limited ways they could probably show the scenes things like that they had to uh, eventually it was tv at the end of the day and so quality standards definitely kind of fell down uh, at that point. So, you know, in regards to, like, you know, oh, one's in color and one's in black and white, that's kind of an unfair comparison. Like, you know, the the the, um, the way that it's shot, the way that it kind of, like, it presents itself. So some, some comparisons, I will admit off the get-go, are going to be a bit more unfair than others. But at the end of the day, you know, the, this is two completely different ways of telling the story. And we're going to just kind of, like, say hey, you know, this, which one will we prefer in this case? And, uh, you know, so, yeah, you all just bear with us in this because this is going to be, you know, you, you're going to find some comments, I think, from me and Patricia that are going to basically gonna be like, yeah, this is a bit unfair, but at the same time, like, you know, it, it's facts at the end of the day, so. Yeah, yeah, we're not being biased. We're not going to rely on uh, nostalgia or anything like that. If, that. if that were the case, then we would have talked more positively on Danny, the champion of the world. Yeah, we're nostalgia. just going to be... Like, you know, if, 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 if you and I were watching this when it first came out, I should just think how old we actually are. <laughs> yeah well very true but uh, i mean regardless i think that for uh, the sake of being objective we're looking at it through fresh eyes because out of all the rural doll adaptations this is one of the most obscure every time that you see a list of best and worst rural doll adaptations this movie does not even make the list at all mostly because nobody has ever heard of it and if somebody does mention breaking point it's always on a footnote saying it was a remake to 36 hours and they go no further details than that so people are going to think of this as like oh it's going to be the same thing as the other movie that to begin with is not one of the more remembered you know royal doll adaptations to begin with so yeah, but that's not uh, I, it's fault i mean like uh, keep this in mind like this is a story about a uh, about a spy who's been captured and is now in this kind of like uh, this Truman show kind of like world. And so you wouldn't exactly say that's kind of like family friendly entertainment, would you? It, it is a, it is a political action thriller in a way. And uh, it is kind of like, uh, I guess you could say somewhat has a little, like a, sp- a bit of horror in it too. So, I mean, it doesn't have, it can't have the appeal like say Charlie and the chocolate factory or, you know, the BFG or any kind of family favorites out of the Roald doll collection. This, you know, when you say that this is obscure, it's obscure for a pretty good reason, you know? And so- yeah. And, and there's another reason why is because there are some faults in this movie when it comes to like the additional things they added into it that are not very good. Like Pike has a wife in this version and Anna, the nurse who's alongside Dr. Gerber looks exactly like his wife. And the reason why is because it's played by the same actress, Joanna Pacula. Yeah. I mean, like in regards to like the Turner production in regards to that, like there are so many flaws in this and like the fact that uh, you know the uh, the nurse in this you can't really root for because obviously she's like uh, in on the whole uh, suffering and like you know they they play like uh, 
uh you know um the flashbacks from you know her being in like one of the nazi death camps and like you know the fact that she's actually been witnessed and even even a perpetrator in in the whole you know, nazi affair like you know th- this would be uh, you know there was a you know the nuremberg trial one of the uh, profound things that they found when but it making you know when they obviously uh, were passing judgment on the nazis that so, you know i was just following orders was not a defense and so, right, you know, exactly. like, uh, so, you know she, if anything, she is probably as as much as guilty as the people who planned all of this. Yeah. So, now, if you're probably wondering, what are we talking about? Wasn't Anna a Jewish prisoner in the original? Yes. Not in Breaking Point. In Breaking Point, she was a German who was in a concentration camp taking care of, you know, the Jewish children. And then she was brought out because she could speak perfect English. And she was lying to Pike saying that she was a Jewish prisoner because from her father's side was Jewish and her mother's side was German. And she faked the Jew, uh, the, um, the concentration camp tattoo. It was a complete lie. So you feel no sympathy whatsoever for Anna. You know what they should have done? I mean, in, my, in regards to if they were going to really change the character of Honor in this, like, I would have probably had to, like, a, say, like, a double agent. Like, you know, she was, uh, she was, like, as a Nazi, but she was also, like, uh, you know, trying to, you know, uh, she was acting uh, also uh, on behalf of the Allies, too. So she was, you know, dismantling, like, you know, uh, you know, Nazi, she was actually giving away Nazi intelligence. Like, she would, like, been like one of the people that helped Pike escape. And uh, she heard about Pike, the fact that she's, that he's in this, uh, in this program. And so she put herself into that program in order to help her help, help him get out. If you will, yeah. she blow a cover, you know, if I, if she was acting as like a double agent and like, she was like feeding information to the allies herself about what was going on and, uh, what they could do. Like, you know, you'd have more sympathy for Anna in, in, in that regard. And, uh, you know, they could even gone further and said, Oh, Hey, you know, uh, I helped, you know, yeah, I, I once went into, uh, one of the concentration camps uh, as uh, one of the nurses, but uh, I actually helped, you know, some of those children actually escape and get onto the kinder transport. You know, obviously be kind of like toying with, 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 with historical, important historical facts, but at least then you could say, oh, hey, you know, she's uh, she doesn't like the Nazis, but she just pretends to be one in order basically to dismantle the system. If you will, right, so right. You, you would have far more sympathy with her. And also on top of that as well, it'd be like, you know, you know, some of these, um, these uh, movies are kind of like, you know, hooray America, in a way right. and you know even then like uh, i kind of would have like somewhat maybe preferred it in this movie in a way because this the, the the breaking point is so bland and so filled with uh no uh color even though it's a color movie you know compared to uh 30 36 hours like you know like for, for me it just feels like uh um that breaking point was trying to reach my breaking point in my boredom pretty much like it was- <laughs> <laughs> it was just they they gave us nothing interesting like you know remember like halfway through the through the movie i basically said my god i really wished for the magical performance of tommy wiseau in the room and like <laughs> it, it was just it you give give us something give us give us something that looks like an eye sort to give out like some people are going to argue that you know the, the scenes where they were torturing pike you know they were sticking like electrodes in his mouth and shocking him and then they were like you know uh, kicking him in the ribs and things like that like you know y- you can do that for shock value you know horror movies do that for shock value and things like that it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to tell a good story so yeah of course those things were going to garner some sort of reaction but you know, it just didn't feel like the rest of the movie just 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 bored me. You know, like there was nothing there to kind of like, uh, you know, grab my attention. I was making jokes throughout the movie. Even then I was growing, you know, by the time we hit by like one hour and five minutes, I was just tired. Yeah, you know? I was tired, too. And, and and one of the biggest reasons on why you remember in the original movie that Pike is just wondering what's going on. And as an audience, we're wondering what's going on, too, because, you know, it took place like, you know, according to what Dr. Gerber said, you know, he has been in a coma and he's had amnesia for six years and he's like confused and he's wondering what's going on and becomes friends with Anna. But in breaking points, we get none of that. First of all, it's uh, well, well, Dr. Gerber it, 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 said a breaking point. One, one thing I would like to point out is that they don't give away the fact that the uh, the hospital is a ruse that's that's the first thing like i really like that breaking point tried to do that at least you know in 36 hours when they kind of gave the whole game away you know like and took the kind of like the whole shock away from it you know like uh, that for me just kind of felt like oh you're just putting in filler you know and not only that you're kind of like spoiling kind of like the in a way spoiling the movie at the very beginning you know 
And so, like, I, I don't know if they want to do it because I don't know if some of these actors were, like, you know, very popular at the time and they just wanted to give them screen time. I, I have no, absolutely no idea why. They I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess for Corb, uh, yeah. So the main actor for Pike, you know, Corbin Burnson, uh, he was very well known at the time for being in L.A. Law. So I guess, you know, him as a major role in this, it's not too surprising that they decided to give him that kind of screen time. And, um, and so, yeah, basically the changes that they put into Breaking Point is that instead of six years in 36 hours, it's two years. And instead of Pike being like so concerned and so um, confused about everything, and then slowly he starts warming up to Gerber and and to Anna becoming friends, he immediately, and I'm not even joking, immediately he starts suspecting things like, you know, asking questions, trying to interrogate them. He does not believe in this for a second. And it just takes away any of the tension and the suspense that we would get in the original. Yeah, but in a way, like, in a way, it's somewhat kind of like would be with the character. But the problem is it's executed so poorly because the unfortunately, the main actor in this is just not interesting in a way. Like, and also some of the people around him, like, you know, the, 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 one of the things about, you know, uh, movies with weak uh, leads for me is that at least it has the supporting cast to kind of like fall back on, you know? Like, uh, I mean, uh, some of the criticisms that I kind of like get towards it, I don't know, like say for Hey Arnold, for example, like, so some of the ma major criticisms I hear is that Arnold himself is not an interesting character. He's just kind of like, uh, you know, the guy in the middle. And the only thing that makes the show interesting is all the people that surround him so that, uh, that so he can react off. And so it's uh, a far different dimension of a show because it's a kind of a show that has like, you know, outward to win kind of uh, a field towards it but you know you have exactly the same kind of situation here but none of what we've got here have you know, there's no interesting characters nobody you can root for in a way like you know he's yeah, surrounded like, like by, seriously surrounded like there's nobody artists. Exactly. Yeah, so, like every single person is a con artist in this. Like Dr. Gerber, in the original, we got to understand on why he was able to relate to Pike so well, because he spent months and months doing research on him. And he said that he knew him just as well as his own brother. And we even got that backstory about like when he was, you know, he was born and raised in America and then he moved to Germany at the age of 16. And then that's why he could speak perfect English. We don't get that in Breaking Points. We get that little mention about like the the backstory about him being an American and then moving over to Germany and then he becoming a Nazi soldier. But the months of research of Pike, no, we don't even get any of that. And it just comes across as like nobody is – you can't root for anybody in this movie. Like Pike is – you know, Pike is not even at the remotely, um, you know, likable as the, you know, compared to the original. Anna is completely unlikable because she doesn't have that tragic backstory. And Dr. Gerber is not likable because we don't really know much about him other than he's just trying to play with this rouse. And yeah, that whole well, tension about, like... I don't think Dr. Gerber was supposed to be likable, you know, end of, I think. Uh, even in the book, I think he was a, I think he was a bit of an asshole. I mean, even... I mean, yeah, he yeah. Was, yeah, he was, but at the, the, in the original, he was played very well. Like, I mean, it was amazing the way he was portrayed in the original. Yeah, well, I think I think everyone was kind of like very. I mean, you you could look at. Uh, I mean, one of my favorite black and white movies actually, Double Indemnity. And uh, so, uh, if you ever get a chance to kind of ch check that out, then uh, you know I would uh, recommend that as uh, you know like one of those uh, you know femme fatale uh, movies. But uh, I mean, in regards to so everyone I think had uh, they really played in the old movies definitely on character because you know keep in mind like there was no special effects back then. You know, like uh, there was no and if anything they like uh, you know it was very expensive to do. I mean, look at The Wizard of Oz. I mean, like, uh, there's a reason why it stands the test of time, because everything there at the time in 1940, when it was, uh, was uh, was groundbreaking at that time. Really, the only thing you had for movies like 32 Hours and other movies that were in, in, in that era was basically the characters that were on the screen. So, you know, they were, you know, there isn't there's a reason why they're they're legendary in, in you know, in, in today's, you know, in cinema. You know, uh, all those people from from back in the day and why we remember so much because, you know, they were they were delightful characters and they needed to be because obviously they were the people they were the most interesting people things on the screen. So yeah, they they yeah, had exactly they, I mean, they're more they're on their that, that time, time, in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. You have to remember that in cinema. 
um, especially like in like 30s and 40s cinema when they were just starting to get started. You know, they had like, you know, puppetry and then you had stop motion effects. And some of that stuff was pretty expensive. And that's why, you know, especially around the World War II era, that's why some people had to rely on stock footage so that they can be able to, you know, keep things cheap. And that's why, you know, they had to rely on, you know, doing everything on a set as opposed to like going outside and to travel to different countries so that they can be able to, you know, go through all of these scenes. And they had to work with the limited limitations at the time and yeah the acting and the performance is what really stands out if it's like a musical they have to sing very well the music has to be good if it's a dance uh if it's a movie involving with dancing like with Fred Astaire then it has to be performed really well so yeah they were just utilizing the actors and you know and the storytelling obviously the storytelling and the acting uh, is what you know helps keep a story timeless exactly and like you know something like the old horror movies as well like uh, you can tell like, it was like the characters on the screen that were doing it and uh, you know if uh, if you if you don't know how important those things were at the time uh, let me refer, let me refer to you to a certain plan from outer space that a certain Mr. Wood did, you know, like, uh, so, you know, there's, uh, there's, you know, you look at that and you think, yeah, you know, you get a huge appreciation for basically the, uh, what you see in front of you in regard to, yeah. uh, performance. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so other things that they added into breaking points was that there was this subplot involving with, uh, a lieutenant who couldn't speak anymore because according to what Gerber said, you know, he had been tortured by the Germans and he, um, was stripped away from his consciousness that he could just barely speak. And you know, and then Pike decides to come over to him and try to talk to him saying, hey, how are you doing? You know, uh, I don't remember what happened after the war, but, um, you know, people like you were very brave. And is there anybody that you want me to call for your family? And he can't say anything. And then we see a, another scene later on in which, you know, they bring him down to the basement and, you know, Gerber's trying to get some more information out of him to interrogate and he can't say anything. And so they, what they do is that they pull out a gun and they shoot him. Mm-hmm. You know, like, again, like, it just goes back to like, uh, oh, hey, you know, more shock value. You know, it's just like, you know, you, you, a lot of other, like, your Pulp Fiction, a lot of people being shot to death. You know, like, it's just, it's, uh, uh, at the end of the day, like, it's, um, when you look at movies like that, that do, that pull out these things, and, but then they give you nothing else to kind of, like, hang on to. Like, it just feels, when you look back on it, it just feels very empty. You know, and, yeah, it does. Yeah. Let's go over to the scene in which, when he does find out that it was all aroused. So, um, so basically, you know, he very similar to the original, he gets a paper cut and in uh, breaking points, he's going through his papers and he accidentally cuts his finger. And so when he's like going through his fingers again, he finds the paper cut. And so very similar to the original, he confronts Anna and he decides to interrogate her, saying, like, how long has it been since I've been to this hospital? What year is it? And then she tells him the truth. And so in the original, the reason why Anna is, uh, you know, when she was interrogated and why uh, later on that um, Pike slapped her in the face is because she couldn't cry anymore because she did all of her crying back at the concentration camps. And then she had to run off screaming, letting Gerber know that he knew everything. Yeah. But in this, ver- and, you know, but in like, breaking... Yeah, and it doesn't that give you far more sympathy for Anna in, for, in 36 hours than it does in Breaking Point? Like, you know, the difference Yeah, in Breaking Point, yeah... Yeah, in Breaking Point, they don't they they do this so quickly. So we have Gerber walking into the room, and Pike approaches him and punches him in the face. Like that's it. And then they just grab him, and then they start interrogating him again. It's like that goes like so quickly. I mean, like he just found out, and then all of a sudden we just go to the interrogation. It's like in the original. I mean, you know, he was sitting down and talking to us, like, how long have you known about this? And he said, I've known about it because of my paper, uh, my paper cut. And then that's when they decided to get the cyanide pill thing, which in the original, the cyanide pill was for Anna in case she, you know, was in trouble and so they found it. And that's how they were able to learn that Anna was involved in it. So in Breaking Point, she, um, Anna does give Pike a cyanide pill, but he uses it so that he can be able to shove it into a soldier's throat so they can be able to have their big escape. Exactly. And like uh, for me, it's just it's uh, um, the, the difference, again, is night and day. Like it's just it's uh, um, uh, it just amazes me that uh, no one you know, did anyone actually do anything to actually look at the original film and think, hey, maybe this is the way 
we should not do it badly. You know, like uh, just get yeah. garner so no, not like copycat, rip it off or anything like that. Just to get just a garner or like you know get an idea of what the science is in this film. You know, like uh, the fact that you know you need someone there that you can sympathize with. There's a reason she's uh, you know a, pr- a prison camp survivor. There's a reason that she's uh, you know uh, she, she's Jewish and and also in uh, this. Uh, in the in, in this situation there's a reason why people you know feel for her when she starts crying at the end of the movie like you know it's like uh, it just, it's almost like they just took one look at the maybe we read just a couple of pages of the book and think hey we can do this you know like it's just it's yeah. uh, attention to the aesthetic of the movie uh, or of the book even so is just totally not taken into account here in breaking point I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. And the climax sucks, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I I would take 36 hours climax over the original movie every single time. Like, you know, like well, when she starts crying in, in there and they go their separate ways. And what, what, a, what a feeling is that? You know, and, uh, you know, it's, it's also a bit of a break from, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the, so some of these movies were kind of like, in a way, a little bit of like straight propaganda in a way, like uh, they would always keep the, uh, you know, the couple together or they would like, uh, it'd be like some kind of like PSA for like saying, you know, don't cheat on your husband or something like that. Or, you know, uh, for, you know, go, go with the guy who's more sensible and, or, you know, go for all your heart and things like that. You know, they would, uh, they would aspire to keep couples together. There's, there's one actually, you know, took a, so it took a very brave step of saying, Hey, you know, uh, this guy's going to go back to America and this girl's going to go back to, we're uh, going to stay in Switzerland until, you know, obviously the war's over. And yeah, in 36 hours, they were never lovers. They were just people who were caught in this situation and they needed to find a way to escape. And we root for them for that. But in Breaking well, well, Point... In, 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 in 36 hours, Pike was single, wasn't he? Like, you know, like... Yeah, they he made, was single, yeah. Yeah, he, they, they were making, obviously, like, you know, the you know the guy jokes of, like, you know, hey, he's, you know, going to the bar, you know, obviously, you know, pick up girls and things like that, you know, all, that whole nine yards. But in the, you know, obviously in Breaking Point, he's married. And so there's, uh, and obviously he's, uh, you know, it just, doesn't it feel, doesn't the sex, well, the so-called sex scene feel very awkward given the fact that, you know, this oh dude, I mean, my God. yeah, or lack of sex scene, if you will, basically it's just, it's two heads kissing and then all of a sudden like he's dressed in, in, in the very next scene, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's uh, very, very lacking to say the least, you know, like if you're going to go all out and like do, you know, if you're going to, actually, you know, if you're going to go to that length to like, give some you know adult representation at least you know make you know show some more skin you know like you know we're bringing yeah, something yeah. that's uh, you know you're gonna get and again like uh blind you i probably after the narrative that we've given breaking point no doubt i'll always be saying oh hey it's uh you know more you know uh it's just more you know not shock value but just basically just more eye candy on the screen if you will, if you like, if you just showed a bit more, you know, steamy action. But, uh, you know, it's like, hey, you know, ter- the Terminator had steamy action. And, you know, at least it's still, st- but they still told a good story, you know, uh, with Schwarzenegger. Right, right. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Be- so in the so in Breaking Point, he's told by um, so Pike was told by Gerber that his wife died from some sort of head concussion. And so he goes through like this massive depression and Anna just so happens to look just like his wife. And because he's so depressed that his wife died. He decided they, they decided to have sex with each other. He decided, yeah. So he has sex with Anna because he looks, uh, you know, because Anna looks so much like his wife, and he needs to, you know, make out with somebody that he can talk to and he can trust to get away the pain of him being in a coma for two years and having amnesia, and then figuring out that the war is over. And then Anna's doing it simply because she's trying to get information from Pike so that she can be able to report it back to Gerber. So there's yeah, no just, love here. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, didn't didn't Anna die in this in Breaking Point? Didn't she get yes. shot or something like that? She did. Yes, right, she so. did. Oh my yeah. god, this I, this this scene really pisses me off because. In the original 36 hours, Gerber felt really guilty about what he did for Pike and Anna. And so he decides that he's going to lie to his superiors. He takes up um, a poisonous pill and he, you know, he basically dies, you know, right before um, the main soldiers go after Pike and Anna over to their meeting to their meetup point so that they can be able to break out to Switzerland and breaking point. Anna dies, Gerber lives, and they're doing the whole, you know, fooling soldiers into thinking that the war is over so that they can get interrogated all over again. So it just leaves it on such a bitter anticlimactic note. 
and well, it you, sucks. You, you, well, we all knew how World War Two ended. Like, you know, it's like, uh, so I guess in a way, I mean, I guess they were saying, oh, well, you know, uh, the, the American and the, the Allies and the Soviets all won. So, like, uh, you know, it's just, it's, uh, so in a way, that's, that's, that's uh, a sort of kind of like, uh, you know, ending, I guess you could say. You know, and then I would just turn around and say, guys, you're fired, you know, but uh, uh, my yeah. God, I did not have a fun time watching this. No, it's just it's just it's uh, I mean, with with 36 hours, like, uh, I mean, I saw its flaws, but if I had to if compare it to Breaking Point, I would watch 36 hours, you know, any any time. You know, it's just it, I just feel like it's a well better put together movie. Well, yeah, exactly. It's well acted. It's well paced. It's well produced. It has better music. And yeah, it sure has its flaws, but they were just working with the limitations at the time. As mentioned before, it only had a two million dollar budget and they were were all being shot in one location so even with that i mean they were able to pull off some really good stuff with its limitations breaking point on the other hand has lousy actors at least compared to the original i'm not saying that the actors in it were terrible they, they would go off to do much better things and they were doing better things at the time but i'm just saying like it, you know similar to what we were saying about danny the champion of the world these are good actors they're just given really weak material the music is not anywhere near as good i mean sure we have you know billy um holidays i'll be seeing you that plays at the beginning and the end of the movie which is why when i did the introduction i had to play the ending credits of the song which is boring as hell and then mm -hmm. finally, you know, any charm that we loved in, about the characters in the original are stripped away in Breaking Point. But the one thing that I did like about it was that it wasn't holding your hand and showing off what was going on compared to like 36 hours where they, you know, go into every detail about like how they would trick Pike into thinking that it was six years later. And this one, we don't get any idea what's going on. It is up to the audience to figure out and put the pieces together. I respect that. That was actually one of our major flaws in 36 Hours. But it doesn't really matter because the execution of everything else was terrible. Mm. I just think that, uh, you know, uh, everyone in that production probably should have just uh, turned around and said, you know, uh, maybe we should just do a feel good movie for the Hallmark Channel. You know, like, uh, just, <laughs> uh, I just think that. Uh, you know what? What a waste of time this whole thing was. Yeah. And, yeah this um, was a this was a massive waste of time. There's no wonder why nobody ever talks about this movie when it comes to Royal Doll adaptations. Yeah, and you know it's just it's, and some people are just gonna say, oh well, it's a it's a TNT classic movie. It's a T, you know it's a Turner original. Like yeah, that's still no excuse. Like you know it's like you know you've you've got the opportunity to tell a good story. Tell a good story. You know, don't just uh, go off on this, uh, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not putting, you know, bells and whistles, you know, aren't going to work. And uh, I'm pretty sure maybe uh, there were some people on that, that on that on that set who thought, hey, well, you know, we're uh, we're doing something here. But uh, I don't know. I, I don't see it, quite frankly. And uh, I hope that, uh, you know, the lessons learned, I think, is probably the best way to describe um Hopefully something from uh, from from Breaking Point in this. That so uh, you know uh, if you're gonna do a TV movie and you're gonna base it on a book and if you're gonna uh, you know bring in some actors and actresses who are gonna you, you really want them to kind of like sympathize with you know um, work around the limitations and concentrate purely on the positives in this exactly. like because at the end of the day you, you know the negatives in Breaking Point are unescapable. Like the you know the the performances on the screen are bland. The music is bland. The uh, the visuals aren't all that appealing. None either. Like uh, they try and go for like some really you know dark shots, but the a lot of the shots that they do in you know in some places that I've seen are either very dull, cloudy, or evening shots. Now that might not necessarily be their fault. It might just be unfortunately they pick, they picked really bad shooting days. But uh, you know you look at that and you think it's just it's it, it feels like you put this on in the evening you probably fall asleep in front of it really like and then and then you'd you'd uh, shockingly wait up when they start torturing pike you know it's just yeah. it's uh that's uh yeah i'm really glad that this will be my only viewing of this movie because i guarantee you unless somebody kind of sits me down and forces me to watch it again i highly doubt i'll be checking it out 
any anytime soon. <laughs> this yeah, so this is the first time in a Roald Dahl retrospective that I will say that this one is not recommended. Watch 36 hours instead. Yeah, this is one that you can easily skip. I mean, everybody else has pretty much skipped it whenever they talk about Roald Dahl adaptations, so you're not missing out. Yeah, there's nothing to gain here, people. Like, you know, watch 36 hours, you know, be blown away by that. And uh, then after that, just, uh, you know, don't, don't think of anything else. Well, read the book. Read the book. Yeah, read the read the short story. It's, it, it'll take you about 15 minutes to read. So you're, you're good with that, too. So, yeah, read Beware of the Dog. Yeah. All right. So that takes care of 36 hours. Now we finally reached out of the 80s and we're going to go into the 90s. So tune in next time as we're going to be talking about the very first theatrical Royal Dull adaptation in 19 years, the one that was worldwide. I mean, I, we had the BFG, which only aired exclusively on Britain until it was distributed other, ways, other places. But yeah, the first worldwide theatrical movie based off of a Royal Dull short in 19 years we're going to be talking about the witches. So, uh, for all of you there, w- w- wanting to uh, which witch is which, we'll see you around. All right, take care. <laughs>